So we've used a few Azul products before. This might be the smallest, but it's also a quad core, so we can do a lot with it. First, I thought with the Azul Access 4 that I would do uh, a little tutorial on how to do computer signage and stuff like that. If you have a business and you want to show your menus, uh, or if you just want to show like a slideshow of stuff, run a billboard or something like that. You can just plug this into the back here with the HDMI. There's also a USB Type-C that will work for an additional monitor. It'll be a, like a display port, so you can run two screens with this. But then I thought, you know what? We're all like hanging out at home right now. Not a lot of us are going out. Uh, business is kind of weird. What we need is home theater. So I'm going to do a couple of different things in this video. First off, we're going to cover the specs and just go over the Azul Access 4. And then I'm going to show you how to set up a Plex media server on a different computer so that you can stream here using Plex. I'm going to try out some retro gaming, some new indie games. Come on, you brute. Uh, and I'm also going to try out some emulators and see what we can get running. So you can take this into your living room or your den or your family room or your theater room or your man cave, which is really just a den without any class. You could use this as a thin client if you have like a really powerful computer somewhere else. But also this could be a client for Steam or just video game streaming. So if you have a really beefy CPU in the other room, be able to play like, you know, crazy AAA games and stuff in your other room, on your living room, on your projector, whatever, then you can just use this and stream the games as long as your network is pretty good. The wireless AC on here is good, but we also have the gigabit ethernet. So you have two different options there. And this is totally fine as a thin client or as a game streaming client. So I would use this any day over the little Steam box or whatever. One other thing I've noticed, we have a standard barrel connector for the power. Check that action out. I didn't realize this was such a big uh, deal, but for some people, this makes a huge deal. So look at it in all of its glory. So the storage, 64 gigabytes of storage on here, four gigabytes of RAM. So one thing I wanna show you in your Windows, especially if you only have four gigabytes of RAM, just check this out. Hit start and type background. And you see background apps will come up. Click on that. These are all the apps that are running in the background on your computer. And these can be eating up RAM and stuff. So you can go through and selectively remove the ones you don't want to run in the background, or you can do like I'm gonna do and just disable everything. And uh, let's check our memory usage now. We're at 72, we were at 83 before, I'm using 10 tabs and trying to watch a movie. Not gonna work, just watch the movie, close the tabs, and do that on this machine. This features the Intel Celeron J4125. It's a quad core 14 nanometer processor with four threads, four cores. And then we have the AC3165, it's wireless AC from Intel. It's very solid and I've tested and it runs great. As the Intel HD 600 GPU, we have Bluetooth 4.2. The HDMI can support 4K at 60 Hertz right there. They give you a little dongle so this doesn't have to plug directly into the back if it's an awkward angle. You do have a little dongle uh, and you can actually purchase a Visa mount where this will mount right on the back of your screen. Then we have our display port, which is also our USB type C there. If you want a second monitor, or if you just want to run this as your primary micro SD beside that, it's little 5.1 inches by two by 0.8 inches thick. And it still has a quad core. So that's where this uh, gets the power to do all the things I just mentioned. It'll turbo all the way up to 2.7 and there's no fan. So it's really quiet. Now, if you touch this and hold it, there's like a proprietary cooling technology. You can actually feel the heat, but that's nothing to worry about because that's the way it's designed. It's designed to dissipate heat throughout the unit. Now, first off, you can get Windows 10 Pro, which is what we have on this one here. It's what most people understand, so I'll go over that in this video. If you guys want another video on Linux, we can do that one. Just let me know in the comments. But you can also do Linux. And then you can even install Zoom, plug this into your TV, have something for chatting in your office. You've got that, you're good to go. If you don't have a USB hub, just get a wireless USB mouse combo because it'll plug up to one USB port. There's only one standard USB port. And then we have the USB Type-C, which is also your display port. So you're going to need a hub if you wanna plug a bunch of stuff up and you can get either a Type-C hub or if you're gonna use your display port plugged in there, then you can just get a regular USB hub and be just fine. All right, now let's get down to business with Plex. First thing you're gonna to need to do is go to your main computer or your NAS and set up a Plex server. Just go to plex.tv and you'll need to sign up for an account. Um, you don't ever need to buy anything even though they're gonna want you to give them money. You never need to do any of that stuff. And this is gonna be used mainly just to tie together all of your applications and uh, so you can stream from one computer to another without any problems. And after that, you wanna come down to the middle of the page, you'll see Get Started. Get Plex, go ahead and click Get Plex. Now on this device, you wanna select the Plex Media Server and uh, you can do it on Windows or any of these NAS units. Now I much prefer to do this with a NAS and I'll show you how to do that as well. But first I'll show you how to install this and get it running on your Windows machine. Now whatever machine you install this on, 
you're going to need to leave that machine on because it's your server. So when you're in the other room using your Access 4, watching it on your big screen TV or whatever, it's going to be pulling the media from your main server so you're not filling up the hard drive on your Access 4. So when you first launch, it actually launches a web page. That's how the media server works. And then you connect it uh, to your account that you signed up with. So go ahead and sign in with whatever account you set up, however you set it up. You didn't use Facebook, did you? Might be a good time to organize your media folder. Now this one's not too organized. I like to have a movies and anime, and I also like to make a TV folder. Put Rick and Morty in that TV. I right, just so remember, you don't need to subscribe to any of this stuff. It's, it's fine. We can add some libraries here if we like, or we can do this from the client, but I guess since I'm here, I may as well go ahead and do it. All right, let's add a movies and then we'll add a TV shows folder. You can add all the other stuff if you like, but I'm just gonna do this with movies. Browse for my media folder, and then you can find your media folder wherever it may be. There we go. So my movie's just gonna hit add and add that library. And I'll add an, uh, another library here for all the anime. Anime is gonna be categorized under TV shows because they're typically serial unless it's movies. Actually, some of these are movies and some of these are shows. So if you have a lot of anime and some of them are movies and some of them are shows, you might wanna do like I do and make two separate folders, one for anime shows and one for anime movies. But we'll just do it this way now and show you how weird it looks. All right, there, we're good to go. Photos, I don't have a photo library right now that I'm gonna share, but that's good. And now it's time to go get our Plex app on our Access 4. So let's say you wanna do this on your NAS instead, which is what I generally recommend if you have a NAS from Synology, Asus Tor, QNAP, or one of the other big brands. On Synology, all you have to do is click on the Package Center, click on All Packages, and then search for Plex. Press Enter. There's two different installations of Plex here. Plex Media Server is the one you're probably going to want, but if you're a power user and you want to go on to GitHub and pick your own fork, you can do that by clicking here to install PlexPy. Then you'll be prompted to enter in your own GitHub fork of PlexPy. If that doesn't make any sense to you, then click on Plex Media Server and install this one. Now the process is going to be exactly the same as what I just showed you, except now it's installing on your NAS and you won't have to leave any of your other computers on. It'll just work. Let's say you have an Asus Tor NAS. This is how it looks. Um, I've got a different background on there, of course, but all you have to do is click on App Central and you wanna click on All Apps and then search for Plex. And I've already got it installed, so you can see Plex is installed. So it's really, really easy to run it um, from your device like this. When you do it, it'll be exactly the same as I showed you on the desktop. All right, now that you've got Plex server up and running, let's go over to your Azul Access 4. Now that this is up and running, let's go over to your Azul Access 4 and set up a uh, Plex client so you can watch your media. All right, it's finished installing, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit start. It's right there, so I just went ahead and dragged it right over here, pinned it to, the, uh, to this so I can just click on it. All right, so I logged in over here, and as long as your media server is running on your other machine, uh, this one is going to be able to find all your movies and stuff. So it'll start pulling all the metadata and stuff. So like for instance here on Army of Darkness, when I click on that, it pulls all of this information from the internet, including your IMDB score. Uh, and also there you can see the Rotten Tomatoes score. All that information is here. And you can even click on the different actors and it'll say like, oh, this uh, person here, Bridget, Bridget Fonda, she's only in that movie that you have. So. Let's see if I've got any more Bruce Campbell. Yeah, I've got three Bruce Campbell movies. Got Bubba Hotep over here and stuff. So this is all the junk that they are trying to sell you all the time. Leave me alone with all that stuff. Click on more here and that's where your stuff's gonna be. There's your machine. I can go ahead and add another library here. TV shows, I didn't add the anime one. So let's just, I actually deleted the other one over there so I can add it fresh here just to show you how to do it from this one. There's anime. I'm gonna add folders. Grab my anime folder, add that. Add library. And it's just being updated, so this might take a while, especially if you're adding like a hundred files or whatever. Yep, pin that one. And then make sure that this one is uh, also pinned. Yeah, pin that one. Just pin all your favorites so they always stay at the top. And when you go back here, you'll see your anime and your movies here. So the movies and TV and all this stuff that's on Plex, you can just unpin that. We don't need these things, unless you're gonna be watching stuff right off of Plex. Web shows, unpin. So this is kind of annoying, but you know, news, podcasts, all this stuff they're trying to like give you. I don't need that, I just need my stuff. So I gotta wait all the movies to update first. But yeah, it works just fine. How many Keanu Reeves movies do I have? Only three on here. Just got a limited uh, library right here, but let's go ahead and uh, get some Bill and Ted going here. See how fast it works on this machine. Streaming from my other computer. This is a hell of a little uh, media center stick. And we got our full screen here. Now what's really cool is if you need some subtitles or something, Click on the little options down here, right? And if there are subtitles already here, you can pick, the, pick those. Oh, there you pick your audio device. 
but if there's no subtitles, right? Well, this is really cool. You can just click on search and it'll look online to find the subtitles and we can click on a couple of these and see if they, they fit. There we go. And then click on your subtitle size. I like to do small, don't need huge, I'm sitting close enough. And then you click here to close your options again and then just click on the screen and the top and bottom bars will fade away in a second. And now check that out. We've got our subtitles right here. So this is now the way that I watch all of my shows and all of my movies because it's so streamlined, it's so organized, and it's so easy to add subtitles and that sort of thing. Plus it really works. So that's what I would do with my Azul Access 4. <laughs> Remember when Midriff was a thing for dudes? <laughs> Let's bring that back. I'm not gonna bring it back, but you, you should bring it back, all right? So that's how you get plaques up and running on your Azul Access 4. You guys can thank me in the comments. There are some people out there who prefer Kodi. It's got, Kodi maybe has a few more features, uh, but I prefer the streamlined elegance of Plex. So that's my preference. And I think for most people, it's gonna be exactly what you need. So now let's play some games on this. One of my favorite genres to play on the couch, click adventures. Because they don't require, um, you know, you, you sit down and like use your entire keyboard. They don't uh, require you to be pert and focused on the screen. You can kind of lean back and play the story. So this is going to be perfect for games like Monkey Island and all the old LucasArts adventures like Full Throttle and Day of the Tentacle and stuff. But it's also going to be really good for some of the darker, more serious games like Beneath the Steel Sky or Gabriel Knight series. This is the beast within here. Chapter 1. And these games all run beautifully. You can just grab them on GOG.com. They're usually on sale for just a few bucks. And, and this is like something I would say, uh, do this instead of watching a movie for a couple of weeks, you know, hanging out in your living room or wherever you want to plug this up to your TV or whatever. Full motion video, remember that? Hell of a lot better than Phantasmagoria. I've also got like, games like Blade Runner, which is one of the best computer games ever made, and it will work perfectly on this. <laughs> Look at this. All right, what do you want to do? I want to go over here and uh, check this bag. Cuts to... Full motion video. Is that anathema? What is that? If you haven't played The Dig, well, the story was written by Spielberg and a number of other people. Lucas was involved, of course, because it's Lucas Arts. And then we ended up with this interesting game called The Dig that I'm not going to tell you anything else about. You just need to play it. Let's try some uh, new games. This is Into the Breach, made by the same guys who made FTL. I think it's a little tighter experience. Start this off. It's a really awesome strategy game. Something you can totally play on the couch. I'll show you how it works really quick. So you have three different mechs, and uh, there's several different combinations of mechs. So what happens is you're trying to defend the Earth from these insects, right? The insects will move first, and they will telegraph their attack. Now when it's your turn, you need to move to counteract them. So I'm supposed to keep these things alive, and I don't want to lose buildings. So this should uh, take care of a lot of this. There we go. So I want to see how Doom Wads ran, and I decided to just run, on, run some uh, Heretic. I had a little slowdown there. I am running this <laughs> wad off of my NAS, but I have the uh, GZ Doom installed locally. But completely smooth, so of course it would be totally fine to play Doom and other things. But I wanted to see GZ Doom specifically, just to see how it would work with some open jail and some filters, you know, and everything. Try some Mario World, see how this works. Everybody always goes to the one on the right first to get Yoshi, but let's just be a rebel and go to the left. Speed, 150. Oh, that's still, that's, well, it's crazy. I can't, can't keep up with this at 150. All this work for a one-up. But hey, it's working pretty damn well. So N64 games run pretty well. Zelda Majora's Mask is actually running better <laughs> than the uh, Super Nintendo stuff was. So that's probably just because I needed to uh, mess with my configs a little better. So this is working really well. I'm gonna have to pull myself away from this so I can get to work on stuff. I try out my favorite platformer. There's no audio. This is the best I can do. Give me all them lums. Oh, this is playing wonderfully. So yeah, totally good to go for N64 games. All right, so I didn't actually expect to be able to get GameCube games to work. And I'm running this and it actually looks better than it does on GameCube because I'm running a little bit of, uh, with a little bit of anti-aliasing. I could actually enable 2X MSAA on this. And I've got Wind Waker working. Doesn't quite, quite look as good as, uh, you know, the HD version you can get on the Wii U. But uh, it does look better than the original GameCube. So you can play this. And it runs right now. It's completely locked at 30 FPS. Looks pretty good to me. All right, so let me know what you would use an Azul Access for. Would you install Linux? Would you install Windows? Would you do like I've done and play some old games and turn it into a media center? Let me know. I'm very curious. Also, while you're on the internet, head over to EpicPants.com. Grab yourself one of these beautiful white mice.
There's actually an Arctic Fox, I believe it's what it's called. But they're over on epicpants.com along with these t-shirts that'll make you probably too sexy for your own good. See you guys in the comments. <laughs> I'm into the Mongols rule China Thursday. <laughs>